it's it's a thrill to be here. I love I really love doing this. So sure enough, you know, it was December third, nineteen seventy three. It was a Saturday night. So that Monday, I went back to my high school band. I said, "Man, you guys aren't going to play this. I played Count Basie's and they said, you're full of it." Well, okay. Why do I tell you that? It would literally take me an hour to tell you all the coincidence and all the things that had to line up for me to be there at that moment. And now, however many years later that is, it's a lot of years later, what I found is that I don't believe in coincidence anymore. And what I have found in my life, and what I really believe is a key to success, is wherever you put your passion, opportunities will start opening up. And you've heard that expression, opportunity only knocks once. It's not true, it's knocking constantly. You just have to be aware of it. So a question that I get asked a lot is, one, what does a record producer do? And two, how, do you, how did you become a record producer? Um, it's akin to a director on a film. We're gonna pick the actors, in this case the musicians. We're gonna pick the set, which is the studio. And we're gonna pick the director of photography, which is the engineer. And we're gonna bring all these disparate elements together and we're going to pick, hopefully pick the right tools for the job because some engineers are perfect for one project and some engineers are better for another project. So the other question is, how did I become a record producer? I became a record producer because I'm just fascinated with the art of recording. So my job as a producer is to make sure that the artist feels really comfortable and confident and confident. I can tell you that the farther you can get outside of your instrument and into other aspects of music, the better musician you're going to be. I try to convince people not to listen to themselves when they play. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's not. I actually sit down to play. I don't really listen to myself at all. And by listening to everything else that's going on around me, I balance my sound. I know how loud to play. I play less notes, and they mean more. So I have another life. I own a record label. I'm one of, one of three owners of a record label called Concord Music Group. So in 1997, um, Concord was put up for sale, and we were just a little jazz label at that point. Um, we bid on it, and we got it. And we turned what was a sleepy little $10 million jazz label into, as of this past week, we're now the largest independent label in the world. As the record business started to decline in terms of you guys going out and buying CDs, what has saved us is the ability for us to take these really iconic recordings and license them for film and TV and commercials and so forth. That used to be 5% of our business, now it's 40% of our business. 40% of our business is licensed. And then we got another little piece of luck, which is Paul McCartney said, I want to make a record for you guys. <laughs> a Beatle. <laughs> <laughs> what? So we made a record called Memory Almost Full. And I'm telling you, it stretched our label to its limits. Because we had success with taking this catalog of, um, of these albums that we bought and, and licensing them, Paul McCartney this year gave us his, and didn't give it to us, I mean, we, had, we administer everything he's ever recorded post Beatles. So we have that now. So we went from a little jazz label making acoustic jazz records to this. Okay. And we got there with really passionate, smart people who always say, and we have to remind our little company of this, is that it's about music. So here's the deal with um, here's the deal with labels. There is a perception. Record labels are these guys that live in these white towers and make a lot of money that take advantage of recording artists. Absolutely not the case. When downloading started happening, and I don't mean downloading off iTunes, you guys know what I'm talking about, going on LimeWire in the old days or Napster. What happened was that, <clears throat> let's just take, I'll take my label for an example. Let's say that I want to make Arturo Sandoval's record, and I'm going to spend $100,000 making that record. My label has to make money off that for us to keep making other records. Well, because we're, we're, we're kind of smart about our money. But you take Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers 10 years ago or 15 years ago would sign a lot of bands 
and they would spend a lot of money making records. And if 20% of the records that they, the artists that they signed, sold, they were in profit. And they signed a lot of new bands. And bands were given a chance, maybe not just one record, but two or three records to develop themselves because the record companies were flush with money. They could invest it in new artists. But what happens as revenue started declining because of illegal downloading, all of a sudden, the pressure on the labels to make every record count got higher and higher and higher and higher. And all of a sudden, you'd have an artist that would come out with their first album and it would sold a half a million units. They didn't make another record. And now, few and fewer new bands are being signed because they just don't have the money to roll the dice, then, well, wait a minute, we're not making that much money off jazz, so guess what? There's no longer a jazz division at Warner Brothers, at EMI, or at Sony. It's gone. Um, how much freedom do you give the artists when they decide to rec start recording a new album? I mean, I know there's like the big labels, Warner, whatever, will tell them, so you gotta do this, you gotta make it sound like this, this is what you're doing. I mean, how 100 percent artistic cool. freedom. Okay. One of the really cool thing about recording for us, which is because we own two recording studios, normally when a, somebody goes in to make a record for a label, as you're running studio time, it's built back to your project. So you've got to pay that back to the studio out of your profits. Our artists are able to use our two studios, and there's no cost to the artist whatsoever. You can use it as long as you want to. And we've never had anybody take advantage of it. It's, everybody's been cool with it. Um, and consequently, it makes our budgets much lower. Right. Like that record would have been 30% more if I'd had to go in and pay studio time. The other thing too is it's a luxury because I can spend a lot more time just really drilling down and getting it the way I really want it. Whereas if somebody said, you know, you've got, you're gonna run out of money tomorrow. And you think, okay, well, should I, I gotta get through this pretty quickly. Um, uh, Greg, uh, there's something else I want to ask you about. You're not you're not billing the uh, you're not withholding any of the artist's earnings as a result of studio time. I'm saying and that's got to come out of somebody's budget. It's built into your machinery somehow. Yeah. Well, it's it's um, to 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 clarify it a little bit. Our two studios we don't use for tracking. So if like on our Turtles record we did this mostly at Capitol Studio. So when I had the rhythm section and I had 24 strings. I needed a large room. So basically our two studios are for everything post-tracking. So all the overdubs, all the editing, and all the mixing, which is 30 or 40 percent of the budget. And um, yes, we have um, two staff engineers, and the, the amount of money that we pay to, um, to the village, which is where the studio is, it's not much, it's $3,000 a month, it's, it's not a big expense. Um, because I'm one of the owners of the label, um, my studio is part of the deal because it's helping build our, our label. So it just, I don't charge for the studio. You but know. you pretty much stand alone in the entire recording industry by doing that, don't Completely. you? Completely. Nobody Do you know of that. another studio that does it at all? No. So that would, that would make your studio all the more attractive to artists. Yeah. So guys, I really enjoyed this. I'm sorry I have to run, but I've got something I've got to do tonight.